Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build personal freedom by becoming a digital entrepreneur. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of financial independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 54. How the free market feeds the hungry with my guest, Jason King, founder of unsung.org. Longtime listeners will remember Jason from episode 21 back in February when he was just getting unsung.org started. Basically, it's a mobile app that helps organize and deliver potential food waste, leftovers, etc., to hungry and homeless people in need. This is the true mindset of an entrepreneur. Find a social problem, get creative about solutions, start spreading the word, and implement. We can depend on the kindness of the human spirit rather than government's wasteful and ineffective programs to solve social problems. If you actually care about the homeless and the hungry, then put your shoes on and get out there and help. Unsung.org will be your guide. Also, I'm really pleased that the cryptocurrency wallet company Exodus.io, that's E-X-O-D-U-S, is sponsoring this episode. I've been using their desktop wallet for a few months, and it's simply the cleanest and easiest cryptocurrency wallet that I've ever used. That said, they're currently hiring for a JavaScript developer to help them continue and build out their platform. If you're an experienced JavaScript dev, want to work in the exciting cryptocurrency space, and consider yourself a liberty-oriented person, then send your resume and relevant work experience to support at exodus.io. I believe it's a work-from-home position, and this could be your entry point into becoming a liberty entrepreneur. Keep up with us on social media by following our Twitter feed at Liberty E Podcast or Facebook.com slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Podcast resources and relevant links are in the show notes on the website. And I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome back, everyone, to Liberty Entrepreneurs. This is Ash, and I've got my buddy Jason King on the show today. Anyone that remembers, Jason was on episode 21, and the show was called How Can You Become an Unsung Hero? Unsung is his company that he's actively working on, and he's about to drop that iOS iPhone app on October 21st. Jason, welcome back. What? what? Hey, thanks, Ash. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, man. So... For the people that haven't listened to episode 21, can you give a a real short bio of who you are and what is Unsung? Sure. Um, My name is Jason King. Uh, I'm a homeless rights and anti-hunger advocate. Uh, Basically, Unsung is an app uh, that connects restaurants, grocery stores, catering services, anyone with excess food um, with a, a pool of volunteers that deliver it to those in need. So it's uh, sort of like Uber for feeding the homeless or the needy. Right. So whereas in Uber, you would sign up and you become part of Uber, you'd use the app to go around and pick up people to make money. With Unsung, you can sign into the app and go around and pick up extra food or available food to go feed the hungry. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what we do. So what was the genesis of Unsung? How did you come up with this idea? Um, So uh, those in the Bitcoin community probably remember, uh, and it's still going strong, I started an organization called Sean's Outpost in Pensacola, Florida, uh, and um, we started in 2013, and and we fed a little over 167,000 meals to the homeless, um, all with Bitcoin. But uh, in in the course of doing that, and being super frugal with uh, with our money and and trying to feed as many people as possible, we would do things like go to the Bay Area Food Bank to pick up food, and we would be like buying 300 pounds of food, and I would watch 5,000 pounds of food be thrown away right next to where we were purchasing this food, and I was like, why wow. didn't you just call us yesterday? Right. Like, why didn't you just why didn't you just call us, and we would have come and got this, and then you know we wouldn't have had to waste you know our hard earned money because you know volunt- you know donations don't come all the time why am i having to buy food that you're going to throw away um and so that was sort of the the thing that sort of ticked it off and uh started me down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out how how bad the food waste situation was in the united states and 
And you go just a little bit under the surface and realize that it's so much worse than you could ever imagine. Uh, in the U.S. alone, we have $537 billion in food waste annually. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's like, you know, that's larger than the, the entire worth of Google uh, as a company, or, or I guess they're ABC now. Right. I guess that... Alphabet. That, uh, yeah, Alphabet, right? Um, so, so are there, so you said that you connect like grocery stores, are there any laws that say grocery stores can't give away this food that they would otherwise throw away? So what's awesome, right? Is that like, that's like this huge pervasive myth. And, um, and it's, I mean, it's super pervasive. If you start asking restaurants and grocery stores to, to pony up on this food that they're going to throw away, they'll be like, well, no, you know, it's, we have this liability issue. Uh, you know, it's, it, we're you know going to be held responsible for this. And the truth is, is that in 1996, there's a federal public law called the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Act that actually indemnifies people for this specific behavior, which says, hey, look, if you've got extra food and you're going to give it to those in need, we're not going to hold you responsible for it. Um, Except in the cases of gross negligence, <clears throat> and they even go on to define gross negligence as like if you were to to actually poison the food. Oh right. So yeah, yeah. So it's like you don't get away with murdering people under this, but like short of that, you're fine. Um, and what's great is uh, Arizona State University actually did a uh, study on um, they did research on whether you know people had ever been sued over this concept because there's there's this pervasive myth you can talk to pretty much anyone they'll be like yo my friend's mom had a pizzeria and they really wanted to help homeless people but then like they gave some food to the homeless people and they got sick and they sued them and now they're out of business right and that's that's in every market like every market someone's got that uh and the truth is is arizona state did this study and there are zero instances zero instances of that happening it's literally just like I don't know, some insurance underwriter somewhere came up with this, you know, kafak the story and it's just, uh, it's just held on. So, so how, how, how does unsung help these restaurant owners or, or these, uh, grocery store owners? Do you think it's just a matter of not wanting to staff or not wanting to write the processes or not wanting to deal with the extra hassle that comes along with, we could just throw it in this garbage container or, you know, I'd have to hire somebody to figure out how to integrate with this unsung what, or, or to feed the hungry. What is holding them back and how's unsung helping solve that pain? Well, so I think if you if you think about small businesses, right? I mean, I'm not talking about like giant multi million dollar corporations, although they get in on the action too. Um, there's not a whole lot of margin in the food service industry as a whole. So, you know, if you if you've got to put pretty much any effort into like storage or or labor or whatever into dealing with this, a lot of times it's just going to be more cost efficient for you to throw that away. Right. Um, but what Unsung can do is we can we can uh, really take that liability. And that's what it is. It's like when you throw food away, you're eventually going to have to pay, pay someone to haul that food off. Right? So that's a liability and we can turn it into an asset because we're a 501 C three corporation. So it's a tax deductible, uh, it's it, donating to unsung as a tax deduction. So we can take what's going to be a liability to you and we can turn it into an asset by giving you a tax deduction for giving us what was going to essentially be your garbage. And then we feed people a need with it. Absolutely. Um, it's a true win-win. I mean, I think the unsung app can actually help you with those deductions, can't it? Yeah. So it's basically is that um, the, the law reads that you're able to deduct half of the retail value of the food of whatever food you donate so it's basically you just let us know what the retail value is of what the do donations are and we'll keep track of it for you and at the end of the year we'll hit you up with a with an itemized deduction sheet that, that's that's amazing uh so i interviewed you back in i think january of this year and yeah in miami yeah that's right the miami bitcoin conference and you had given out a couple hundred mills at that point where do you currently stand nine months later I think that this week will cross 10,000. Wow. Um, yeah. And so what's really crazy is, is that, so in terms of say like what Sean's outpost did, right? It's not, it's not a whole lot of meals. We were doing a whole lot more, but, um, the amount that's been spent, you know, I think all together, um, all of our donations and everything that I've put into it, we probably spent around $20,000 total so far. So if, if you think that we've got 10,000 meals fed out of it or close to 10,000 meals fed out of it, right, that's about $2 a meal, which is more expensive than we did at Sean's Outpost. But we've also, with that, have also built an app and yeah. a community and like and all of this other stuff. So we like to, we like to uh, think of Unsung as this ion thruster, right? So it's like it takes a little bit to get up to speed, right? 
But once it's at speed, it never slows down and it just keeps getting faster and faster and faster and faster. So if you look at if you look at our distribution over the year, yeah, I think in January we were at a couple of hundred meals. I think maybe maybe we fed our four hundredth meal there in Miami Beach. Um, but like it's just hockey stick up from there. And um and so I, I you know, we were kind of discussing this beforehand. Um, like a week and a half ago, um, I was at the funeral of my co-founder Dean's father. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away from coal, um, from um, lung cancer, and we were at his funeral. And his mom was concerned um, that there was all of this food left over after the reception, and uh, and it was like r- super simple. You know, we just like sprung into action as unsung and dealt with all of these leftovers from this from this funeral, um, and it was this. Uh, it was this great coming together of people. They realized that it was like really simple to just sort of put these meals together. And then they, they were taken out into the community in Wilmington, Delaware, which is our first meals in Delaware. And in a very short period of time, we had fed uh, like almost 200 meals. Wow. That, that is, um, that, that is amazing. And you know, tell me more about these communities. I know that you've got communities starting to spring up all over the place and the network effect of these communities being built is like what you said is what causes that hockey stick of the number of meals being provided. Like what have you seen in these communities? Where are your biggest and best communities and who would you like to give a shout out to? Sure. Um, so we, we're based out of Baltimore. Um, and so that's, that's really the only place the app is launched and it's not really launched. It's in beta on test flight for iOS. Um, so that's the only place that we've really been testing the software. But, uh, Paul Graham talks about, uh, Paul Graham, the founder of Y Combinator, he talks about this effect that when you're building something that people really, really want, they can't wait that like they're basically beating down your door for the things that you're doing. And, um, and so while we're, you know, testing this application in Baltimore, all of these other cities are like, yeah, we've got to get in on this. Mm-hmm. Like we've got it, we've got to do this. And so our first, our first example was Austin, Texas, um, which is the home to arcade city, uh, which if, I, don't, I don't know if you're, I'm sure your, your listeners are familiar with them. A lot of them. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, they're basically like a decentralized Uber and Lyft. Uh, well, I ended up on uh, another talk show with Christopher David, their CEO, and um, and the talk show host was like, hey, look, you know, Arcade City's got drivers. You've got, you know, this food application. Why don't you guys just, you know, uh, collaborate and, you know, Arcade City drivers can drive food around. And uh, I kind of not brushed it off, but I was like, oh, that's a, you know, that's an interesting thing for this, you know, large company to jump in with us. And Christopher David was just like, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's do it. And then within 24 hours, we had over 100 Arcade City drivers sign up to deliver food in Austin, wow. uh, which is a ton, which is, I mean, this is just like a lot, lot of interest. So a week later I was in Austin and we were getting people set up and we were getting food donations. And, um, and, uh, Austin has been this great market. I mean, they've fed thousands of meals down there on their own and, and they keep expanding, they keep growing. Um, we had a, this great thing just like a couple of days ago, um, foodie, which is like, uh, I guess they're sort of like Grubhub, mm. right? Um, they do food delivery. Well, they had a, a catering misorder of 50 pizzas and oh, they, and they came to us, they came to us sort of panicked, right? They're like, yo, we got these 50 pizzas and like, there's no way we're going to be able to get rid of them. And I'm like, yeah, we got this. Hey, what's up everyone. We'll get back to the interview in just a second, but I wanted to remind you that exodus.io is hiring a JavaScript developer. They've created a multi cryptocurrency desktop wallet. It's a work from home position, which if you're qualified could be a great way to start experiencing more freedom in your own life. And if you're not a coder, then tell a friend about the opportunity. What a great person to help someone else land an awesome job in the cryptocurrency space. Send your resume and relevant work experience to support at exodus.io. That's E-X-O-D-U-S dot I-O. All right, let's get back to the show. They came to us sort of panicked, right? They're like, yo, we got these 50 pizzas and like, there's no way we're going to be able to get rid of them. And I'm like, yeah, we got this. It was like 40 minutes later, we had unsung Arcade City drivers there, picked it up, took it over to 6th Street and uh, I mean, to, sorry, 7th Street to where the arch is in Austin and uh, and like live feed of just all this food being, you know, disseminated. This That was this problem that literally like this right. organization thought right. of this as a problem. And then 
an hour later, it was, you know, hungry people aren't hungry anymore and you're getting a tax deduction. It's, it's, it's so beautiful, Jason. I love this so much. I had to get you back on. What does it mean to you to be one of the guys really pushing the envelope to help people see that voluntary and cooperative relationships are the best way to feed and to take care of people as, as opposed to like taxation? Well, so. You know, obviously, I'm I'm a libertarian anarchist bent myself. So obviously, that's a that's a belief that I hold, right? Um, but even coming into it sort of jaded, what we've realized is is that it's not just that it's better and sort of it's more efficient. It's just that it actually it individuals are more familiar with their neighborhoods, with their communities, with the people around them that are in need, right? Um, and so. It's not just more efficient. It's significantly more effective, right? Because like uh, your local, uh, like your local homeless shelter that's supported through tax dollars, right? They're going to support whoever their contingent is, and that's great. I'm glad that they're doing that. Um, and then you know, places like um, you know the food stamp office and social services and things like that, they're doing their job. But it's like it's this little little field of vision, whereas like there's a much larger problem, you know, in the United States, there's 49 million people that don't know where their next meal is coming from. Mm -hmm. And these, these large institutions and these large agencies, they're just ill equipped to deal with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, like in, in Baltimore, we've had this great thing. We're running this pilot program with a couple of public school teachers that are like, Hey, look, um, you know, we, we teach, uh, freshman high school, uh, English, and, uh, you know, in first period, our kids come to class and like, I can't even give them the focus because they're starving. Um, and so like we've started dropping food off for these classes and these kids are like actually kids that would skip class cause they were going to go to try to go out and wrangle up food are coming to class now. And I mean like we can have a public school debate. That's a whole different thing. Sure. Right. But if you think that there's value in that, um, they're actually, you know, kids that were roaming the streets trying to hope to find food are actually finding food and then, you know, sitting around in the classroom learning, getting taught instead of whatever the hell that they were doing out on the street. And it's all with this you know, this essentially stuff we're pulling out of the waste stream, things that would be thrown away right. and it's being converted, uh, you know, into mental energy, which is just, it's amazing. It, it is amazing. It's like so, literally someone else's trash is, is someone else's fuel, right? For them to work or to think or to, to survive or to get by or to become more healthy. This is literally someone else's trash that you and your, and your teams and your communities are able to just make, just bridge that gap, just bridge that missing, that air gap between all the food and all the hungry. You guys are that bridge. You know, I, I just, I think I'm in love with this unsung idea because it truly helps me have a beautiful example to show all my friends that are still favoring the state doing this or doing that. And look, I, I don't disagree. There are a lot of good things that come out with food stamps or homeless shelters that are, that are funded by taxpayer funds. But just the energy that I always sense in you and in what you're doing is such uh, empirical evidence of the ability and the willingness of free and voluntary people to help each other and how ultimately entrepreneurs like yourself are solving problems in society, right? You're looking out into society, using your own time. You're risking your own time. You're risking your own money, right? You're risking your own career. You know, you're doing this full time these days. And like, you're putting so much on the line that you you're going to make sure that every action and every penny is spent efficiently because you don't want to fail. This is a cause that you want to succeed in. You want less hungry people in the world and you're literally putting your time, money and energy TME towards that goal. Um, what is that? Yeah, what 100%. Is, yeah. And so just, just tell people like if they were going to come to an unsung event, right? Let's say the pizza event, for instance, what's the energy like here? What's great is is uh, so if you follow if you follow Unsung on Facebook um, or actually on Twitter Unsung at Unsung Org, um, you can just check out the live feed from the pizza event and it's like everybody's pumped up. Everybody's like, it, it, it's crazy how this like simple idea just brings people together and people just get it and the energy is just it's just off the charts, you know, because people get it. They're like, holy crap, this was gonna be trash. And now it's like being, you know, repurposed for all of this. Everybody likes, you know, reuse and recycling and everybody likes all that stuff. Right. Um, but like with food, because it's something we all need, I don't know, it just hits us in a very like primal visceral spot that that's what's going on. Every, everybody just digs it, you know? 
Well, Jason, I really appreciate you coming back on the show today. Is there anything that we didn't cover or any contact information or any advice that you'd like to give some listeners that have some free time and might be interested in volunteering to help feed the hungry? Yeah. So um, on October 21st, we're going to launch in the uh, app store for iOS. Um, and so we're opening up Unsung everywhere. It's not just going to be in the cities that we're, you know, that we're currently operating in. So if you want to bring Unsung to your area, hit us up. Unsung.org is our website. Um, I'm Jason, Jason at unsung.org. You can hit me up personally. Um, and we'd love to get, you know, get a, a tribe set up in, in your local area and start doing this work. And you can start helping people in your community that, uh, that are hungry. That's right. My vibe will attract my tribe. Just rattle off some of the names of the cities or the places where unsung communities are starting to pop up now in case anyone's interested. Sure. I'll do it. I'll do it in chronological order. So we went uh, Baltimore, D.C., Austin, uh, New York City, Seattle, Miami, Phoenix, uh, Wilmington, Delaware, uh, Bloomington, Normal, Illinois, uh, and Los Angeles, San Francisco. Man, so if you are out there and you truly want to help the hungry and those in need, the homeless, and you don't think that tax dollars are doing what you think is possible, then get out there. October 21st, download the Unsung app on iOS and make a difference. Really, really put your movement and put your energy where your ideals and morals are and contact Jason. He's an awesome guy. He might even uh, he might even take you out to a dance club every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do that soon. <laughs> we will again, we, we soon. Really again. All right, Jason. Well, I'll put all the uh, all your contact information in the show notes. I really appreciate you coming on the show today and just keep building freedom, Jason. Thank you. Thanks, Ash. Take care, man. Thanks again for listening to Liberty Entrepreneurs episode 54, How the Free Market Feeds the Hungry, with my guest Jason King from unsung.org. If you want to make a difference, then be the difference. Mark your calendars for October 21st and download the unsung.org app and start feeding the hungry. Also, I need more reviews on iTunes. It helps so much in the rankings. If you have an iTunes account and are willing to leave me honest feedback, please link me to the review and I'll give you a shout out on the next show and send you $5 in Bitcoin. Until next time, keep building freedom.